Hey guys, it's been another week and this time I'm gonna go over everything we know regarding a Majora's Mask remake. Not only that, but I'll also squeeze in some current news around the end of this video. So speaking of a Majora's Mask remake, Zelda fans have been really been anxious to see a remastered port of the title and new consoles. In fact, it's been three years since Operation Moonfall was first started. So in other words, it has been a long time coming for Nintendo to consider this. However, Nintendo has hinted to the anticipated remake, and these hints have plagued the interwebs through vague interviews and cameos that have really captivated Zelda fans. So without straying too far in trivial information, let's discuss this particular topic. So before we talk about how either development team number 3, Grezzo, or some other developer will handle the development of a remake, let's look at the original developmental information of Majora's Mask. That being said, this statement is going to be quite a shock to some. The game Majora's Mask was only made in a little over a year. Not only that, but originally Majora's Mask was supposed to be a revitalized version of Ocarina of Time, called Zelda Gaiden or Zelda Side Story, which was originally planned for the Nintendo 64 disk drive system add-on. However, Dungeon Designer at the time, I.J. Anuma, hated the idea of making expansions to a current game, so he voiced his complaints to Shigeru Miyamoto. Miyamoto agreed on Anuma's complaints and gave him a green light to develop a new game altogether. However, there was a catch. He only had a year to develop it, including the game play experiments in the 64's disk drive add-on, Majora's Mask had a development cycle of 18 months however. As some of you probably already know is that the disk drive add-on for the Nintendo 64 was a commercial failure so it was dropped. In all honesty, the game Majora's Mask is well, in other words, beautifully rushed. Many of the same character models found in Ocarina of Time were still present. Not only that, but the 3-day cycle was not only a gameplay choice, but a design choice as well to compact the game for easier development. When the game was first released back in 2000, it was hit with criticism for feeling like a rush sequel to Ocarina of Time. However, the game really has aged well and encompasses many themes and motifs that other Zelda games haven't touched upon since. The game as a result became a huge fan favorite of the Zelda series and one of my personal all-time favorite Zelda games. So when the GameCube was released back in late 2001, ports for the past Zelda games were going to be featured in it. So in 2003, The Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition was released, which contains the first Legend of Zelda, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, Ocarina of Time, and Majora's Mask. However, these ports weren't of the best quality especially for the Majora's Mask port. Since the port wasn't so much as a port but an emulation on the GameCube, the game suffered from a lot of sound irregularities, glitches, freezing, and even a lower frame rate. These issues derive from the fact that Majora's Mask required the expansion pack for the Nintendo 64, whereas Ocarina of Time didn't. This made the coding material of the game to be more difficult to work with. For about six years, Majora's Mask has been in the dark. However, in the April of 2009, Majora's Mask was released on the Wii's Virtual Console. Ever since this particular release, fans have been contemplating whether or not this game was just a copy from the Collector's Edition version. Many of the same issues were reported to be in the Virtual Console version. However, many, like myself, found little to no issues. In my view, the Virtual Console version is a revitalized version of the Collector's Edition. So with that, you know all the background information regarding Majora's Mask. This information does have a huge impact on the potential development of a Majora's Mask remake which I will explain. Now then, what seems to be the biggest issue regarding porting or messing with the code of Majora's Mask is the fact that the original game did use the Nintendo 64's expansion pack. In other words, coding and remastering the game won't necessarily be the easiest thing in the world. However, I suspect that the coding of the game would be the first and foremost issue whoever is developing a Majora's Mask remake. Past that issue, it is only a matter of frame rate and content. Speaking of which, remember the interview where IG and Numa hinted at some sort of a Majora's Mask hint in the game Link Between Worlds? Many fans have pointed at the Majora's Mask in Rabio's shop as the only hint. However, I believe there are other clues regarding a Majora's Mask remake other than this. To that end, I point to development and file size of Link Between Worlds in Ocarina of Time 3D. Link Between Worlds has a file size of 685 megabytes, while Ocarina of Time 3D has a file size of 512 megabytes. This particular file size is moderately large compared to other 3DS games. However, during a past I Wanna Ask's interview regarding Link Between Worlds has given us quite hearty information. One of the main points I will discuss about this interview is the fact that development team number 3 was working on other 3DS games alongside with Link Between Worlds. Note that this does not necessarily mean it is a Majora's Mask remake. 
it could have easily been porting other games to the virtual console such as the Oracle games in 2013 for the 3DS eShop, or team members under Hiramasa Shikata could have been working on other projects. However, the point I'm trying to make is the fact that I suspect the Majora's Mask remake would be in a similar file size between 500 and 700 megabytes. Speaking of the frame rate, I also suspect that 30 frames per second similar to Ocarina of Time. The reason why I'm saying this is because Grezzo has had a really hard time increasing the frame rate for the 3DS remake. Now, I am aware that all I just said right now are a bunch of useless facts. However, when placed together, I believe we have a clue on how long a Majora's Mask remake would take to develop. So in summary, the main issue I suspect of creating a Majora's Mask remake is getting around the coding hiccups of the game, but at the same time keep it at a moderate file size to ensure a healthy frame rate of 30 frames per second I suspect. That is quite a tall order to do. However, judging from past development cycles, this should only take 8 months at max. So what does that leave us? Well, it leaves content and soundtrack. Since Ocarina of Time 3D did have an updated soundtrack, I can't imagine a Majora's Mask remake would follow suit. The content of the remake would be another question. Ocarina of Time 3D did feature its own modified master quest in a boss challenge mode. It isn't a far off statement to say that the developers of a Majora's Mask remake would consider adding new modes such as the second quest or something along those lines. In addition, it would most likely use the same engine in Ocarina of Time 3D as reference along with the original layout of Majora's Mask. Also, I can't imagine character models in Ocarina of Time 3D would also be used as well. So an estimate, a Majora's Mask remake would take a year and a half or two years judging from all the work. In addition, according to many of Miyamoto and Anuma's interviews regarding showcasing a new 3DS game, I suspect a Majora's Mask remake if any date would be released, it would be in the summer of 2015. Moving on to the next section, I will discuss potential developers that may develop a Majora's Mask remake in addition to when this game may have started development. Speaking of the potential developer does spark some potential candidates, mainly with Grezzo, Flagship, or development team number 3 themselves. However, I believe the most likely developer of the game would be Grezzo, which is a bit of a no-brainer. They have, after all, developed a 3DS remake of Ocarina of Time, so they are the best qualified for the job. Speaking of which, there has been a question on whether or not a Majora's Mask remake should be on the Wii U or the 3DS. Personally, I do hear strong arguments on both sides, but a remake for the 3DS strikes me as the most likely. However, a Wii U version isn't impossible. However, back on the topic at hand, Grezzo is the best guess on a developer of a Majora's Mask remake. But specifically, who on the development team would undertake this? Well, obviously IG Anuma would oversee the project regardless of the development team. But I have a strong hunch that Shun Moria, Mikiharu Oiwa, and Hiroyuki Kuwata will be directing over the remake. The reason why I chose these three in Grezzo is because they were the directors of the Ocarina of Time 3DS remake. However, there's one more person I would like to mention, and that is Yoshiaki Koizumi, whom is the game designer director of Majora's Mask. This man has an accomplished knowledge regarding the coding of Majora's Mask. In my view, it is highly likely that if Majora's Mask remake was in the works, he would be chosen to help out. Also, Koizumi does have an accomplished track record in Nintendo and is well versed in developing games on both the Wii U and the 3DS. Now that we have covered the developers, let's move on to the potential time frame of the development cycle of a Majora's Mask remake. Due to multiple interviews and inferences I have made, I suspect a Majora's Mask remake of any date would be considered a release in the summer of 2015 would be the most likely. If that's the case, then I suspect a year and a half or two years in development. Backtracing the development period that would place the beginning period of development would be late 2013 or early 2014. To support that claim, I go to interviews with IG Anuma that was taken in those time frames. Coincidentally enough, around this time frame, Anuma has hinted at development of the game. Also, if that information wasn't supportive enough, the last game Grezzo has developed is Flower Town, which was released in 2013. If you are really skeptical, then I go to this article from Go Nintendo, which states that Grezzo is working on a new game called A Legend Title. Obviously, they have been working on something since late 2013 or since Flower Town, which fits in towards this particular hypothesis like a glove. However, these assumptions aren't just that, assumptions. I can easily be wrong, but these educated inferences strike me as the most likely. However, I am just one person. If anyone watching this has any insight or catches something I did wrong, then please comment away. 
So in summary of all the information I have just presented, the original Majora's Mask has been difficult to port in the past, mainly with the issue of the game utilizing the Nintendo 64's expansion pack. The coding material as a result would be the biggest obstacle in developing a remake. Judging from how long that would take and the potential developers that would develop the game including marketing strategy, I suspect the game will be released in the summer of 2015. I know I may seem a bit more specific in this episode of Zelda News, but I am very confident of the research I have compiled. Anyways, a special thanks goes to Lowe's Jam, Pokey Village, Chozo Dian Emissary, Sosuke Power, Samuel Lemon, and Nice Pasta for contributing to this week's episode. If you have any information pertaining towards anything Zelda related, please comment below with the source and I'll feature your name in next week's episode. In next week's episode coming next Monday, I'll be going over what future Zelda games on both the 3DS and the Wii U may have. Episode 8 will be coming on August 25th next Monday. Also, I have several announcements to make. In the near future, I'll be making a Zelda collaboration video with HMK. It is going to be a big one, so be excited. Anyways, if you guys are into games, gaming discussions, Sanic the Hedgehog, or exploding conversations, then check out our weekly podcast series. Click here to see the current podcast that airs every Wednesday. This Wednesday, however, we do have a special guest, and this Wednesday's podcast will be featuring special guest Nice Pasta. Anyways, I placed a lot of effort into this video. Even if you didn't like this video, I am grateful you have watched this far. However, if you did enjoy this particular video, then please like and share my work since it really does support me. Also, in recognition of this really rapid support I have been getting, I will be doing a special giveaway once this channel reaches 10,000 subscribers. Anyways, please like, favorite, and subscribe if you're new. Till then, this is a tribute video to a very charismatic actor. Mr. Anderson. Sitting there in agony. Come on, Todd, step up. Let's put you out of your misery. I, I didn't do it. I didn't write a poem. Mr. Anderson thinks that everything inside of him is worthless and embarrassing. Isn't that right, Todd? And that's your worst fear. Well, I think you're wrong. I think you have something inside of you that is worth a great deal. I sound. My R. Eric. Yop. The rooftops of the world. W. W. Uncle Walt again. Now, for those of you who don't know, a yop is a loud cry or yell. Now, Todd, I would like you to give us a demonstration of a barbaric yop. Come on, you can't yawp sitting down. Let's go. Come on, up. Gotta get in yawping stance. Uh, a yawp. No, not just a yawp. A barbaric yawp. Yawp. Come on, louder. Yawp. Oh, that's a mouse. Come on, louder. Yawp. Oh, good God, boy, yell like that. There it is. You see? You have a barbarian in you after all. Now, you don't get away that easy. Picture Uncle Walt up there. What does he remind you of? Don't think. Answer. Go on. A, a, a madman. What kind of madman? Well, think about it. Just answer again. A crazy man. No, oh, you can do better than that. Free up your mind. Use your imagination. Say the first thing that pops into your head, even if it's total gibberish. Go on, uh, go on. A sweaty tooth madman. Good God, boy. There's a poet in you after all. There. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close them. Now, describe what you see. Uh, I, I close my eyes. Yes. Uh, and this image floats beside me. A sweaty tooth madman. A sweaty tooth madman. Or the stare that pounds my brain. Oh, that's excellent. Now, give him action. Make him do something. His hands reach out and choke me. That's wonderful, wonderful. And all the time he's mumbling. What's he mumbling? Uh, mumbling truth. Yeah, yeah. Truth like, like a blanket that always leaves your feet cold. Forget them, forget them. Stay with the blanket. Tell me about that blanket. You, 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 you push it, stretch it. It'll never be enough. You kick at it, beat it. It'll never cover any of us. From the moment we enter crime to, to the moment we leave dying, it'll just cover your face as you wail and cry and scream. Don't you forget this.